Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see one more problem. So in previous class we saw the two types uh, the beam which having a point load, uniformly distributor load and momentum on the beam. Now we are going to see today in this class uniformly varying load. So and in next class we will discuss about uh, uniformly varying load only that another type is trapezoidally distributor load so we will discuss that in next class so first we will see this one today okay if you see the problem here they are saying that beam a b shown in the figure so this beam a and b is shown in figure it has hinge support at a a has hinge support and roller support at b and determine the reactions developed at the support when the forces shown in the figure are acting on it so there are, these are the forces acting on the beam this is uh, hinge support this one is roller support so they are asking to find the reactions developed at the these supports okay so for finding the supports first we have to draw the free body diagram so now i am going to write free body diagram for this okay so here i am drawing the free body diagram of this one so here we have b a and b and uh, this having hinge support it has two reaction forces then one is x direction r a x another one reaction force at a in y direction and for roller support we have only one reaction force in vertical direction that is rb and next they are given uniformly varying load so if you see this one this is triangularly distributor load so for this load the load which is which will act at the uh, center of the this body that means uh, first uh, for uh, drawing free body diagram we have to convert every type of loads into point load like x coordinate in y direction x coordinate and in y coordinate okay so here they are giving uniformly varying load so to convert this uniformly distributor load into point load so we have to do one thing so for converting this uniformly varying load into point load that classes have explained in the second class of strength of materials or applied mechanics so please visit that video so you will get uh, knowledge on that one and next if you see here so for converting uniformly varying load into point load we have to multiply this one and this one like we have to multiply these areas so for that the load will be if we take load as a force as f which is nothing but here they are given this is the uh, triangularly distributor load for triangularly distributor load the load is half into area that means area half into this length is 3 into this height 30 so from here we get 2 ones are 2 15s are so that 15 uh, into 3 45 uh, this is a kilo newton so we'll get in kilo newtons okay we are getting load as 45 kilo newtons so where this force will act uh, in this 3 meter spam so that means wait. so this is 3 meter this is 1 meter and this one is also 1 meter and this one's one meter so this force will act in this three meter span at the center of centroid of this point okay centroid is nothing but b by 3 from this maximum side okay so b by 3 means like here length is three meter so l by 3 3 by 3 is nothing but one from here to one meter so from here to this is three meter from here to here so if we take this as one meter uh, this as 2 meter so from this end at 1 meter distance the load will be acted that is equal to 1 by 2 into this 30 into 3 that is we got 45 kilo newtons this much of load is acting so we have to convert this uniformly varying load into point load in this way next they are given 40 kilo newtons next they given inclined load so we saw in previous classes also so for that 
here they are giving 60 kilo newtons and in x direction 60 degrees so here we got 60 into cos 60 and here we got 60 into sin 60 so if you see here 60 into cos 60 which is nothing but 30 60 into cos 60 which is equal to 30 kilo newtons 30 kilo newtons and 60 into sin 60 which is equal to 30 root 3 okay which is equal to 30 root 3 so i am writing these things here so in a y direction we have 6 sin 60 that is 30 root 3 and in x direction we have 60 cos 60 means 30 we got 30 kilo newtons everything in kilo newtons here reaction force is rb this much we got okay and the next one is we know that static equilibrium equations so from the static equilibrium equations that is sigma forces some of the forces in x direction is zero some of the forces acting in y direction is zero and some of the moments at one particular point which is equal to zero so from first one some of the forces acting on equal to zero from this equation so in previous classes we saw the sign with the sign conventions we saw the how to solve the problem now we will see i i set the trick in the solving the first problem at the end of first problem so with the using that trick we will solve this okay so some of the forcing acting in positive x direction which is equal to some of the forces acting in negative x direction this is equal so in with the help of this we will find here so we have rax which is in positive direction and uh, here only we have one direction which is acting in reverse direction so positive x from here rax which is equal to so only one force is acting in negative direction so that which is equal to 30 kilo newtons from this equation we got rax in this way we can find and for some of the forces acting on y so some of the forces acting in y which is equal to zero for this some of the forces acting in upward direction which is equal to the sum of the forces acting in downward direction so here upward forces is ray so ray and any upward force here rb is there so plus rb which is equal to down sum of the downward forces which is 45 plus 40 and next one is 30 root 3 which is equal to so if we see 40 plus 45 is 85 plus 30 root 3 so 30 into root 3 so we will get 136.96 136.96 kilo newtons okay in this way we got the ray plus rb equal to 136.96 and next one is third one i am writing here okay no problem i will write you know, down so third one is sum of the moment so i am taking it point yes sum of the moments at point a which is equal to zero okay for sum of the moments at point a equal to zero for this uh, for sign convention if we don't remember sign convention then we can write uh, sum of the moments acting in clockwise direction which is equal to sum of the moments acting in anti-clockwise direction so we have to equate like this so for this i am taking momentum about here so if we see 45 degrees so the perpendicular distance is 2 meters okay not 3 2 meters so from here to here is 2 meter so 45 into 2 is the momentum and the direction if you see the direction 45 into like this much this is in like clockwise direction so for so i am writing 
clockwise direction which is equal to anti clockwise direction so for clockwise direction we have 45 into 2 which is nothing but 45 to the 90 and any clockwise direction plus 40 so 40 into perpendicular distance here total length is 3 plus 1 4 so 40 into 4 so 4 4 is a 16 160 plus 160 moment acting in this clockwise direction and if you see here also 30 root 3 into this much distance which is also acting in if you see here this is also acting in clockwise direction so 30 root 3 into 3 plus 1 4 plus 1 5 this is the perpendicular distance so 30 root 3 into 5 30 root 3 into 5 so we will get 259.8 so plus 259.8 and we got a 3 uh, clockwise direction and here which is passing through this beam so this is collinear with this point so there is no momentum for this point next one is this one rb which is if we see that this this arrow mark is upward so if we see, this is going in this way so if you take the moment this is like this means anti-clockwise direction so this is equal to clockwise which is equal to anti-clockwise direction that is rb into the perpendicular distance from here to here which is 3 plus 1 4 5 6 so 6 so in this way we can write the momentum at one particular point so from this equation we got rb equal to so i am writing here so we got 90 plus 1 sorry 90 plus 160 plus 259.8 this much we got divided by 6 so divided by 6 we got this much for a decimal point we need press to this one so 84.967 so from here we got 84.967 kilo newtons in this way we got the rb value if you substitute rb in this uh, above equation we got ray value so from here we can say ray so if rb is here rb is 84.967 so if we take this side negative now so 136.96 minus this one 84.96 okay we can write up to 967 which is nothing but 51.993 kilo newtons up we can write up to two decimals or three decimals so it's our wish so we got RAX, RAY and RB value and for finding R, we know that RAX and RAY so for finding reaction forces we have to find the resultant force so for finding RA resultant force at A point we know that formula that one resultant force at A which is equal to in the root of RAX whole square plus RAY whole square so i am writing here that means the root of rax is 30 so 30 square plus ray ray is nothing but 51.993 51.993 whole square which is equal to 60.027 so 60.027 kilo newtons of force is acting in which direction this force is acting so for that direction theta equal to tan inverse of modulus of ray by modulus of rax so which is equal to so i am writing here for tan inverse shift plus tan then we will get tan inverse by ray is nothing but 51.993 by rax is nothing but 30 so from here we got 60 degrees around 60 degrees so 60 degrees so 
at 60 degrees the area is acting so after these whatever the values we got i wrote here so at, at the end of solution you write results and whatever the values you got you write here and if you see rax we got positive na? so which is in positive x direction so we can represent in this way and ray is positive so upward direction rb also positive so that means rb is nothing but this force is for uh, roller support which is acting upward and next resultant force this uh, these two we can represent as like uh, if this is the point a the force is acting ra ra which is equal to 30 kilo newtons in which direction with 60 degrees angle from the x-axis in this way we can represent after the completion of problem so you can understand in better way whatever the your results got otherwise you can uh, represent this valuation after uh, after solving the problem you can draw a free body diagram and represent here ra with the theta and here we have rb so whatever the forces they are given in problem with you can represent the things here okay in this way you can solve the problem uh, if you understand please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching